I think it, 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 it's primarily all I do is not abuse the Jewish Sorry, even if they cease being British or English, they still have values which they draw on through, through the Quran, through the Sunnah, uh, through the example of the Prophet Hamid. So we, we have this kind of universal template that we can take wherever we go, whether it be in Alaska or London or wherever. We don't need that local culture to give us that. Can I also say something? The media has a very big part to play in the way that Muslims are portrayed, and a very dangerous, dangerous way that they're doing it. Right? If you look at Shabir Mubega, we all know about Shabir Mubega. Show, show the camera your marvelous uniform. Raj is outstaged by someone. Different style. 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 You're, you're, you're yeah, I mean, I don't normally understand. agree with Ali Diva, I mean Ali Dawa, <laughs> uh, the, guy with, the only guy with a tissue boy. Right. I don't normally agree with him, yeah. he's Russian made it man, he's a big time, big time diva now. So Russian. basically when it comes to him, I, I admit yeah, that kind of video, I agree. Like, normally he talks a load of baloney, but that time I was like, alright, why would you refer to our baby as a jihadi baby? Baby has not done anything. The baby is a newborn baby. It's the media as well. They, yeah. they, you're they deep, got, you're they demonizing the sins of the parents onto the baby. Yeah. Which is there was a white guy, right? He was making homemade bombs in his house. And he was actually, he had uh, public figures on his board. He threw darts at them. And one of them was uh, Obama. One of them was a duchess. And I think he had some other public figures on there. And he was making homemade bombs. And they never once referred to him as a terrorist or even a potential terrorist. Yeah, this is a Rather, problem. they said he was a right wing extremist, right? But when a Muslim does something, he is referred to as a terrorist. Now, for me, that that hits me very hard because I know Islam, it's imagine if you're a something's good and someone promotes it as it's being bad, right? And if people believe that it's more bad, then it is good. And the truth is, Islam means peace. It's a way of life. It's so important that a way of life which originates from peace is being called a terrorist, violent. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be controversial, but when I hear the word you, controversial. I'd look, yeah. look, look here. I don't mind you saying, you know, Islam is a beautiful religion, Islam is a way of life, Islam, you know, is the right way. But using the word peace, that isn't the, 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 the word that kind of... There are concepts of war, the same in other religions. Oh, no, I'm not, let me just say something. Sikhs are not You guys got to target the legacy of Islam. No, 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 I'm just saying that. Or what you perceive to be the peace with God. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's better. It brings peace with God. <laughs> with justice comes peace. Because Come you, on, you, dude. Jihad, You'd be killed under Sharia. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, he wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. He wouldn't. If if you this is why you don't understand this Islam. Is, this is a cheap shot. Wait, if you were committing adultery in public, you'd no. be killed. I mean, what kind of argument is that? I don't practice that, so I would I'd be perfectly fine. I know this, I've spoken to you. Like you're like a chicken that likes KFC. But you want to speak about it. You're like a chicken that likes KFC. Sorry, I apologize. I was trying to. I was trying to. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I apologize, but I apologize. Do you think um, that uh, Muslims' culture or uh, the culture of Islam uh, fits in with British culture? Yes, it can. Of course, it can. Because the five oh, hundred. Do you think it does? Yes, yeah, it, 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 it does. It does. It does. It does. It can. It doesn't. Islam doesn't oppress or go against the British law or the British way of life. It doesn't, right? The really? five fundamental foundations of Islam. Yeah, one of them is praying five times a day, right? We have mosques where we can specifically pray. In our house. Some people pray in the public, unless there is a law passed that you cannot pray in the public, I don't see what the problem with that is, yeah? Some of the Muslim, Muslims are ordered to wear headscarf, right? Why is somebody's dress code affecting you? Because you're wearing your lower outfit, he's wearing his outfit, I ain't got a problem with it. So if somebody's wearing a headscarf based on their religious duties, I don't think people should have a problem with it. And a lot of Western people, regardless of the extremists and regardless of ISIS, they still don't like.
like Muslims, based on the way that they dress, based on the way that they pray, they think that we are kind of invading and trying to, you know, they want to uh, preserve the white race. But you do know that the West was more, much more traditional. If you look yes, at the photos, it's, it's kind of like, look, there's an extreme on both sides. The West has become an extremist in terms of liberalism. They have become very intolerant. So they think that, you know, aborting babies is normal, that this is normal, that, you know, walking around in a certain... Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't walk around in a certain way, but it's, it, for, it, I just prefer traditional values in the sense of a traditional a family and stuff. It doesn't mean I hate the other. And so there is an extreme on both sides. I agree the West has become quite degenerate very in its kind of losing of its traditional... And so, they feel like they have a superiority over people so because they're white. So no, what's happening is then you have another group that's come in who are very traditional. Right. Like, and so they become that it's way. It's a clash of and so right. and one has become that way. I think if Muslims come in the 20s, I don't think you'd have as many problems because the, in the 20s the traditional values were much more strict. It's a culture clash. Yeah, so what's happening? Because they feel like they're advanced and they feel like we're backwards. Right. right? Okay. They good, say we're good. getting more modern. All right. Good. Doing things differently. Right. Good. All right. So I think what you said there's quite good. You said it's a culture clash. So if there's a, if there's, if, there's, if there's a culture clash. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up. It's on their side. They're offended by us. I'll say later. Pick up. Dark night. We're not offended by them. Pick up. 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 Pick and be respectful. So let's not get into the Sharia because I'll start ranting and raving. But I'm just explaining. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But I'm just, just, just for my sake. You know, I've alluded like Tourette's that when I start hearing certain things, I start spouting myself. So today, because of the situation with the terrorists, I don't want to be going around being negative out of respect. So next week, I'll be back and I'll be starting doing my things. But one, one of the things, like I said here, is that I do truly believe that there is a solution and I do think that. Um, Muslims are British and part of the UK and the West. They have their place, like the Sikhs had their place and other minorities. The only situation I see is that we have two societies that are polar, polar opposites now. At one point, they might have been more similar just a hundred years ago. If you look at the way Britain was, it was much more in line. Yeah, and my, my, let me just say something. My sister wears a headscarf. It's called a Junni. She doesn't go out without it. My mum wears it. She doesn't go out without it. So the Sikhs wear it as well. So we have a lot in common in terms of it's not called a Jawa, we call it a Junni. And so we believe in current hair. I believe in traditional values. I believe that intoxicants and stuff are wrong. I used to drink, and so I know, and I stopped six years ago. And Look, look what I've become. It's, it's better I've become. Sometimes, you know what, Islam, probably people want me to say, drinking, oh, Islam is very strict, you can't drink alcohol, you can't smoke drugs, you can't commit adultery. But if you actually look at the benefits of not committing adultery, not drinking alcohol, not taking drugs, it's more better for you rather than to do these things. You understand what I'm saying to you? Because yeah, we, we know that, but we don't want to impose no, no, of course, of course, of course. Of course we know that, you know, drinking is wrong. I can testify to that. Drinking, the reason why religion ban it, our, all these intoxicants because you cannot think properly and I've
But I can sit there with a coke or I can sit there with that. The, the, the pub is not going to make me drink. So you can, certain areas, I've seen it a lot here. Like, you know, I remember when I was working But, but, but Muslims are not going to go into a pub to integrate with people. No, no, That's your no, I'm not saying I'm not saying to go into the pub to integrate with people. What I'm saying is that there are certain places that, you know, there's certain people you'd never meet that congregate. And once in a while, say if there was a birthday, because I've had it in the past that, you know, someone says there's a birthday party from work, and two or three people say, we can't go into our pub. And I'm like, dude, I, you know, you don't have to drink, let's just go. And what it does is like, it makes, what it does, it makes them, others start thinking, okay, this person's quite unreasonable. They want to distance us. I'm not saying going into the pub is a good thing. Going into a pub is not a good thing. But there are sometimes, other ways, remember, Muslims and non-Muslims live in workplaces and stuff. Yeah. So, so, as you said earlier on, you see a culture clash between the culture of Islam or Muslim culture and British culture. So, what do you think is a solution to that? I think um, the British people need to practice tolerance because I've heard some of their arguments right I was watching a video of uh, an area up north and there was a huge riot and Asian people moving within to that community and they interviewed a white guy and he said you know are you happy that these Asians are moving in he said no I don't, I don't want to live next to them he said why because um, they're going to be cooking Asian food and I don't want to smell Asian food and they love Indian simple, food <laughs> simple little things like that right now remember we Muslims came here we didn't come to their country, so the, we came into your place knowing full well what we're going to expect, right? They have not been very welcoming to us because as if, if any Muslim that complains about a British cult, about the way of life, Achi, you can go back home. I'm born here I'll, I, and I don't really have that kind of choice because this is all I know, you understand? But you do have a lot of foreigners coming here, coming here complaining about the UK, we don't like the UK, the culture, da da da. The UK allows us to practice our religion, right? How many mosques are there in London alone, right? There's mosques everywhere, alhamdulillah, yeah? But majority of Muslims get to be religious, get to wear their headscarf, get to pray five times a day. But you do have the British people who have a problem with our way of life. So it has to come from them first, because we're not coming here attacking you. We, we're I, not coming here. Hold on, hold on. Because you know this whole Muslim and vs the West thing, yeah? Like I said before, they came into our country and they came in with guns, and tanks and their armies with the intention to kill us. We have not come here with that same intention. We have come, like my father, for instance, he was an Iraqi refugee. Yeah, he was fleeing a war-torn country because of what the West had done to his country. He could have come here thinking he was seeking revenge. No, he didn't do that. He came here, saw safety. He saw refuge in this country. My father was working as a bus driver for over 20 years. He was a civilized person. Built, bought a house, raised his family here. And that's how the majority of Muslims come here. They don't come here thinking, right, we want to seek revenge, we want to kill the West. No, not the way that they done to us. You understand what I'm saying, Chief? If this country is a so-called liberated country, we're supposed to be living in, in, in peace together, then you should allow people to practice their religion until it oppresses you. Islam doesn't oppress people. Now, I will have to be honest here, we do have extremists on our side. That is a fact, and this is what fuels the hatred. to say something. Yeah? I'm really polite today. Hello? This is what fuels the hatred, yeah, because when we have extremists on our side saying to us, uh, saying, oh, we want to take over the West and, you know, kill all the Westerners, that is wrong, that is wrong. So we have to tackle the extremists on both sides, right? Tommy Robinson, he is a hate figure and he has a lot of hateful people following him. They have to change the whole narrative. Hey, can I just say something? Because um, the thing is, one of the things that's quite, quite strange is that when my family come in the, the 70s, there was this disdain for Indian smelling food, yeah. Now you go to the supermarket, what? You've got a whole aisle. So what it is here, what, what it is here, what happens is that these people aren't necessarily racist. What they are is they're fearful of the other. But what happens is if they, they truly are reasonable people, they will adjust their views. Now, if they're full on racist and they don't care what you do, they're lost. We cannot do nothing with these people. But the Indian food thing is quite a weird thing because at one point they used to complain, oh, it stinks, it's this. Then you have, now, I have people like my sisters, I'd say, people, white people coming out, oh yeah, did it, I see it. that smells nice. So this is how people can kind of acclimatize, yeah? And this is what one very, very trivial thing a very trivial thing but it shows you that something that could be seen as uh, being kind of disgusting at one point and alien to them become the natural indian uh, natural national dish national national dish. dish hold that point there it's a very strong point so, so you were, we were talking about culture right muslim um, or, uh, or the culture of islam and british culture and then you started to talk about food yeah right so there is a very close connection, in my opinion, between food and culture. Food springs 
from the culture of the people. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? Right. So, 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 so it's not a light yeah. from the so, environment. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so, so it's not a light yeah. subject. Yeah. Food yeah. is not a light so, subject. So look, we're in Ed Edger Road is right here, yeah? yeah. Edger Road, the whole strip is Arabic restaurants. Lebanese, Middle Eastern food. I go there, see white people there chilling, eating yeah. our food. Yeah. So you're right. Food can unite the people. Okay, I'll quit. watch this now, but watch this. Food can now unite move, the people. I'm going to move slightly higher, more intense level. You just said, correct me if I'm wrong, that food, Indian food, can become a national yeah, at dish. Yeah, at one point it was a national dish. Uh, uh, national I think dish, it's Chinese. Hold it. National dish of, of where? Well, of the United Kingdom. Yeah. Did you hear that? So Indian food can become the national dish of uh, I think the United food Kingdom. Is kind of like Nas national, yeah. national dish. So you say it can become. So can you see that the British people can see the pattern of the food, and then they might see the pattern of Islam and Muslim as overtaking their culture. So they're going to be upset if they start thinking that oh, you Muslims, you don't like drinking. So that means, in the long term, if we, if we work out the time, you ought to try and make, not consciously or you know, this is not to wipe, oh, yeah, not, to not wipe out the pubs. No, no, that's not. Yeah, right. Alright, so let me. Right. Right. No, we don't have the intentions of doing that. Can I just say? We cannot do that. You just said we cannot. I know, but but listen carefully to to the flow of the conversation. We were talking about the culture of Islam, the culture of Muslim. We're talking about British culture, which we understand British culture to be a drinking culture and, a co and consuming alcohol. So, and then you were intensifying it by saying food and drink are emblems of a culture. And then you were saying that the food and drink can become the national, you hear the words? National this so some people hearing that might thought oh indian <laughs> indian food is now a national dish <laughs> thinking that we're taking over that's yeah, right yeah, that's, that's, the point I make, that's the point i'm making it used to be fish and chips yeah, there and you go that's, that's indian dish yeah, that's so, yeah. the point. so so all of a sudden this muslim drink and muslim food and muslim culture will override British. I mean, I've used the I've, I've used the analogy no, of this year. Yeah. So, hold on, let me just say that I've used the analogy of this year. That I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. That if I was to go from job where my people are from, yeah, and there's such a rich culture, food, language, and I was to go there, and all of a sudden there was 30 percent Chinese people. Yes. And all of a sudden, certain areas have changed. Chinese, right. food, Chinese. Food. Right, now, right. I, I would not hate the Chinese, but I would be like. What's going on? What's exactly. So there's no yeah. hatred the of the people. Yeah, that word. So, 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 so what, what word? So what I'm saying? Islam is not the majority Concern. of the world. No, we're not saying about Islam. There are more Chinese people influencing not, the culture. We're not. There are more other cultures influencing the no, British culture saying, than the Islamic culture. What we're saying? No, we're yeah, not saying Islam. Culture, we didn't say that. We didn't say that. We didn't say that. We didn't say that. They've been here way before us. No, we didn't say that. We didn't say that. But when it's the Muslims, no, we didn't say that. We didn't say that. We're talking about all of us because we are all a problem to some of these people so right. what we're saying that's is right. that that's i'm right. just trying to say that if i was to go if i was to go to the punjab and there was suddenly 30 percent chinese right. i do not hate the chinese but go. i would start thinking my culture is er eroding and right. so what is happening in the uk i think these are people that don't hate us specifically but I hate the fact that they're seeing their way of life but changing. Is now, I, I, will, I will say something. It's in I will, the cities. Look, I will, London is different to Derbyshire. London is different to Kent. It doesn't London mean it's rational. To Surrey. The majority on. is. England is 80%. Let me just clarify something. It's 80 percent Let me just clarify something. This is not coming from rationality. It's an irrational thought to a certain degree. So it's not about rationality. You can be, I could say I'm scared of that tree and you can say, no, the tree's not scary. Well, if right, I truly right, believe the tree is right. scary, it's not my I can still be the So right, what right. I'm saying to you is that there is this, the British people are deluded. I think so, no, no, Are you saying the British people are deluded? Those people that have these rational thoughts that Muslims are trying to attack them, that is a form of delusion. Yeah, that is delusion, that is delusion. Just by looking at a Tacky. Muslim and saying, oh my God, it's a Muslim, he's ready to kill me. Look, I, I used to wear a headscarf, right? Just the fact I used to wear a headscarf, I used to get looks. Looks on looks. I used to have someone put the Nazi sign at me just for wearing my, 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 my thing, you know what I'm saying to you? 
because they're deluded because they have this mindset that every Muslim is out to get them, every Muslim is a potential terrorist. That is delusion. But those people are lost, and there's no way of getting through to them. Rush, but there are people the that are, there are people that may that think like this yeah. now. Yeah. But if you if you was to talk to them and start to kind of people yeah. need to speak to each other and not demonize each other when they are raising their concerns. So if someone says to you, look. When I go to this area, you know, all the pubs have shut down and all of this, I don't feel comfortable. You, there's no point going to say, oh, you're a racist. You should start asking them, why do you feel uncomfortable? What is the problem if there's no pubs there? You know, drinking is you know, I'll, I'll give you a good But do you example. understand how you can tackle I'll, I'll it? I'll give you a good example. That's right, that's I'll give you a good right, example, right. yeah? I was in Essex, right? I was in a little village in Essex and I was on my way home and I was waiting at the bus stop. And the bus stop's there, not like London, it comes yeah, every 45 yeah. minutes. So there's this one white lady there and me and her started having a little conversation and I was like where are you going or whatever because I'm going down to London I said oh yeah that's where I'm from she was like without telling her I'm Muslim or anything like that she said to me oh well you know in London there's a lot of Muslims there I said, yeah 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 there is yeah and she goes well what I find about them is that they're not really friendly you know they don't like to give people smiles and stuff you know, I was there and I was smiling at them and they weren't smiling at me back and at this point I didn't tell her I was Muslim and she was kind of, she wasn't being racist but she had this perception of yeah, Muslims, right? Yeah. I had to look, by the way, I'm Muslim and she goes, oh wait, no, I'm really sorry, I didn't oh, try yeah. to offend you. I said, no, no, I didn't find you offensive at all. I said, unfortunately, sometimes, you know, maybe they were just having a bad day. Maybe they didn't smile back at you because yeah. they were having a bad day. But not to say that all Muslims are not friendly because I'm a Muslim, yeah. I'm having a conversation with you, we're laughing, we're having a chat, yeah. you know what I'm saying to you? So sometimes with um, people, you're right, we can't yeah. just, Oh, you're racist. Yeah, you yeah. can't fight fire. You with need fire. to ask them what their problem is. Like, I'm gonna give you one more. I've said this. I've said this sometimes. before, yeah, three times. But I think it's important. When I was 16, I'd come from a multicultural yeah, area. I had to go to a place yeah. called Romford. At that time in the 80s, it was all white. So when I went there, I swear to God, I thought like everyone hated me because they were looking at me, and I was so uncomfortable. I never. Went, I didn't go back for maybe 15 years. Now that was in my head. Yeah, these people may have been looking at me because I'm wearing a turban, they've not seen the turban before and stuff like that. But in my own head, it was a real fear. I felt out, an outcast and I felt scared going back to that area. I thought people are going to be hostile to me. This is the problem with a lot of white people. I think when they go into an area, that area is not scary in real life. It's not, no one's going to get attacked. Right. There's no such thing as a no-go zone here. But in their own brain, they're, they've got this mental hang up that when they walk in that area and they're the only white person, they're fearful for themselves yeah. and the way they, they, they feel like a minority in that group. That is an irrational fear though, and white people need to understand they can walk into any area. It's, your country. it's not a problem. It's your, it's your place. But can I, can I, you yeah, yeah, can I say yes, that sir. if we go to a more subtle uh, view of what you're saying, yeah. that the fear comes, yeah. might not necessarily be of violence. Yeah. But if you see your culture diminishing, mm. that that is almost something like you mm. diminishing. Mm. Does that, sir, that make, does I that think make the sense? British culture is very much alive, though. We cannot. The British culture is very much alive. I feel its presence, right? I don't feel when I when I'm walking around the streets, I feel the British culture more than I do the Islamic culture or or the Caribbean culture. I feel the Britishness here. But Zabuda, this is not a rational thought. So we have to understand. People are thinking. Like, like, you know, you can have somebody not that... Logic, it's not logic, It's not logic, but that doesn't mean that the, the fear is not real. So yes, somebody has, that's right. So somebody could be scared of a spider. That spider can't do nothing to you. But you are so scared, you want to run away. But, but you know what? So, I, 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 say what, I, 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 I don't like the scared. hypocrisy how, the, how, how, how the British people are trying to play this victim role of fear or we fear the Muslims. When they have a history terror. of attacking and colonising other people. You understand what I'm saying? So no, let's not try to play this victim role. Because everybody's we're not, when we come everybody. into your country, no, 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 we're not coming here to do what you do. Well, do you know the Islamic conquest of India? I called 150 million Indians. No, but it's not talking about your country. It's talking about your country. 150 million Indians. Yes, yes, yes. To me, to me, it has still doing the same. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying that this narrative that is only the white people that are being conquering other people. You're trying to compare it. No, I'm not compare. comparing it. What I'm, saying to, what I'm if saying to you is that... If a youth steals a Mars bar out of shop, hold on. or someone holds a bank at gunpoint, which is the worst crime? What I'm yeah, saying to you... Crimes, for, but there's one hold on, much, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But for me, up, yeah, so this is a, a subjective thing here. Yeah. For me, when people have come into my land here, yeah, and they are chopping up my people and You're stuff like about that... You're talking about Muslims that have been... What I'm talking about is that... No, no, I'm not going to go down this route because I don't want to go down this route. This one I'm trying to be nice today. But what I'm trying to say is that... This That's narrative of just the white man being the oppressor is a dangerous narrative as well. So what it is here is much more nuanced than that. So, so 
everybody has oh, subjugated shit, people. But I like. I will say one thing: the West takes it to the next level of madness. I don't there's mind no the doubt about that. Yeah. When it, no, what I'm don't, saying. Don't play the victim hold on, what too I'm much saying, because remember, there's got a lot, a lot of blood in your hands. You understand what I'm saying? And we have the right to retaliate, and we're still not doing that. Right, so we're still not doing that. Language. So, language. so let me just say, no, 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 let me just, you said right yeah, we do. to retaliate. If you're being attacked, you have you don't have the right to defend to yourself. Defend yourself. No, you right. shouldn't be a yeah, I, I, I understand, but the right to retaliate. So if it's, you're, it's if you're, yeah, I understand what you're saying. But as a British, say, say, as a British, a white person or a British white person, uh, listening to what you just said. I don't know if it's right to right. do this today. You would be very difficult. Pick up, man. Pick up. I don't know if it's right. Now, no, it's right. now. I don't do it today. Do it next week. I want to clarify that video because people are making some of them. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll talk to you later. Don't go. Don't go today, though. No, no, not today, though. After the, do you understand? Leave it today. We'll do it next week. That folks are playing. Let's not do that. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Because if you look at the history, you brought people here. You understand? You, 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 you're complaining about the same problem that you caused. You talk about immigrants being here. Why are immigrants here in the country? Right, right, right. Hold on, yeah. hold on. They were very happy where they were at, especially the Caribbean. Do you know how beautiful the Caribbean was? They would, why would they want to leave that to come to here, fam, unless they were brought over here? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah? With the Iraqi people, we've got a beautiful country as well. When you come down, bomb up the whole place, fam, where do you want us to go? You want to shut on our house, so we're going to come back to your house. No, you can, you, all right, so let me say something here. White people need, the, the, the Europeans need to understand you. There is some blowback from some actions. My family had a British passport. Why would they got a British passport if they're from India? Uh, yeah. You could have to ask yourself that. So they didn't come here uh, illegal or anything. They, they just came here as legal residents. So and the reason. Why is one of your So so the reason. Why is one of your You're from India. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 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 The reason why we got That's British passports is because yeah. India yeah. was colonised by the British. Yeah. So okay. obviously, because they colonised, we then have a right as a British citizen, and we came over. Yeah, and so and the British people, so the British yeah. people cannot then say, okay, why did you come over? You are in our land. Yeah, you made us a subject of your particular kingdom. And we are allowed to come over well, now because we got a British, we got a British passport. So I hope to God that everybody calms down now because I wasn't saying nothing negative. Yeah. Everyone mad. You just, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel me. Yeah. I didn't feel me, but it looked like yeah, it was like some kind of like craziness just happened for me. I don't know what I said. At the end of the day, I don't think we, as Muslims we should retaliate. Any minority should retaliate, even regardless of the past. But I think the past should be acknowledged when folks are trying to play the victim role. Because when you want to start playing the victim role, hold on. How are you trying to cry wolf when you've done X, Y, and Z in the past? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I agree and with there's that. no excuse for us to say, you've done this to us and we should do the same to you. No, we shouldn't retaliate in that same sense. You can't fight fire with fire. But at the same time, when Jeez. folks want to say, why are these people coming into the country for? Hold on. Let's go back and see what you've done to the people. You know, so you brought them over here. Look, look, look. I, I agree, with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. Look, here, the Britain oh, is yeah, a multicultural yeah. society now because they colonized the world and they allowed, uh, they went around and they went into countries, they conquered and done this and they've done some barbaric yeah. stuff, including slavery, which is one of the worst crimes against humanity. And now there is some form of blowback in the sense that for them, you got to understand. You, you got to understand that if you go into a land and then you'll say you're you're now part of the British Kingdom, then I have a right to come to your land. I agree with you on that. What I don't agree is is this kind of this narrative that, all right, they've had a past and they've done a lot of bad things in the past. Now we are going to kind of come in here and say, look, we're just here. We're not part of the country. We're just here and we're kind of going to take what we want because of what you've done in the past. Yeah, no, what we need to do, what we need to do, what we need to do as a productive so society is to move forward from that in order because remember whatever we decide now and what we do here is going to affect people's children i've got no kids thank god but i've got nephews and nieces and i worry about their future and their future do you understand so, do, you, do you believe that uh, the british uh, should pay um some kind of reparations towards india or yeah. was it iraq Yes. Uh, not to Iraq. India, no. Iraq, oh, okay. Iraq, no, no, no. Do, do you believe that? I don't know if you believe that. Iraq, Iraq, yes, Iraq is still start, rebuilding start, itself today because of what they've done now because uh, ISIS. Because you know how ISIS was formed, yeah? 
They came there. Imagine you grew up in your country, in your hometown, yeah? Suit. You're watching your mum yeah, get yeah, raped. Yeah. You're watching your brother and sister die. You're watching your hometown collapse and then they leave that country. The ones that have survived, they're going to be so angry because they've seen all this war, all this oppression in front of their face. They're going to have secret revenge. This is how ISIS was born. Because of them. You understand? So now they have to clean up that mess. The, yeah, you're talking about the British now, you're talking about. No, well, mainly the Americans, to be honest with you. Oh, the Americans. Mainly the Americans, yeah. Obviously, Britain did contribute to that, even in Afghanistan as well. And, they, and even Britain sending airstrikes to Syria as well. All I have to say about that is that Tony Blair, all he had to do was opt out. He didn't have to help Bush. Right. He did not have to help Bush. But still, it's only when England want to keep America and Russia as allies so that if shit hits the fan for them, okay, they have America and Russia to basically help them. So then when George Bush went to a war with Iraq and Afghanistan, Tony Blair decided to do that. And that's how Tony Blair put all the financial infrastructure into the war, which put this country into debt and into recession. Okay, can I just, uh, do, we can go back to the subject in a minute, but I think uh, you're here now, so let's just address it. One of the things is two weeks ago when I come, uh, I've known Masood for quite a long time. When we first met, we actually were like a lot of people that I meet are very angry with me and they wanted to go for me and stuff. That just happened. But now we're cool here. And one of the things is that when I'm talking about the British identity, he's a British Pakistani Muslim. Yeah, I'm a British Punjabi Sikh. Now, he did say something uh, like the two weeks ago that I actually advised him for six months not to say well, just think. because I thought that the negative kind of uh, blowback would have been too much for him, but you handled it well. Now he did. You said you served in the British Army for eight years. Now let me let me just specify one thing. He told me straight out, and I said okay. And he told me specifically he never went to any countries at the UK. He never went to any military wars, and you actually was a conscientious objector when it comes to the Iraq war. So just clarify. Yeah. I never went outside of Europe. I didn't go to any Muslim country or anything. Yeah. And I didn't go to the Middle East. Okay. And you and did say you didn't want to go. You said you had to ask. I had no choice. My dad forced me. In the no, I'm saying when I'm, I'm thinking. Remember, are you, you told me a story that they asked you, "Will you serve?" And you said no. I said no. I refused. Yeah. So sure. you could have to understand. Look, because okay. uh, yeah, there's a lot of comments saying he's a traitor. And Basically, this people and only that, like yeah. Muslims when they want to go to Egypt, when they want to go to Dubai, when Where they want to go show? turn up their skin Where? to look like Arabs, when they want to take Arabic tattoos, when they want to eat kebabs, that's when you really like I Muslims. Yeah. And I want to say to people, yeah, like the white racist, yeah, you white racists <laughs> have never <laughs> served your country, have you? This guy has. He's done more for you, so he's more British than you. Yeah, so the thing is that I don't want, because one of the reasons why I didn't so I want him to disclose this, because I know there's a lot of bigoted people on a lot of sites. But like he said, yeah, he was a conscientious objector. He decided not to fight in those particular wars, but to do it in areas that are serving the UK and stuff. So anybody that's writing these comments about him being a traitor to Muslims and all that kind of stuff, you need to shut your mouth. Uh, all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go, go. You, you want to say a little bit more? No, basically, um, yeah, just on, in reflect of what Raj said about me being in the army, um, that was uh, that was in 1998. Do you want to come in a bit? That was yeah. in, sorry, that was no, in you, you might just come in the middle. You're quite big, you know. No offence. Yeah. Yeah. That was in 1998. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't have a choice. Yeah, I was a bit of a terror when I was a kid. Yeah. So, um, so to speak, my dad. Um, I basically went inside to prison yeah. for 18 months. But good behaviour, first time offender than yeah. in eight months. You let somebody slip the other week. What's that? No, oh, don't say, don't say. Don't. <laughs> no, no, don't joke it. I'm joking. Big up Shanzi. Big up Shanzi. Okay, when I was released, obviously, I mean, I was in the car with my dad. I fell asleep. Within the hour of being released, I woke up in the army barracks. No way. Okay. Yeah, that, oh, oh, shit. So therefore, guys, I didn't have a choice. Okay. It was, either, it, for you, it was either the it. army barracks or the street. Well, you know. But it was definitely not at the back of my house. Okay. But do you think this happens to a lot of white kids as well? That they're kind of like from Sometimes bad backgrounds, and what their parents do is just like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna send you rather than you go in prison. I just want to say this one thing. Back then, when I joined, okay, there was no terrorism, there was no extremism. The only thing that there was was the NF and the BNP, and that was it, and the National Front. Now I'm gonna have to dispute that because I actually knew uh, uh, his book Tahir, and that was from 1992, and they tried they killed a guy in my college, and they tried to beat me up as well, and some of my friends. So there has been extremism from all sides. Then globally, globally. 50 others of the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying from my own personal experience that this, this situation about extremism just happening after 9-11, no. I used to know Majid Nawaz and this guy threatened to kill me when I was around 19. So all, I, all, 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 all I'm saying, all I'm saying, all, oh my God, what the hell, oh my God. I'm the most, even when I'm doing good, yeah, I'm now getting heat. So basically, all I'm saying is that Extremism, yeah, has been around in all, even in my community. There are Sikhs that are very extreme. Yes. Not, not the way so, the British 
so so they're they're very they're very they're very extreme in all areas. They, I would even I would even say <laughs> yes. Let me say that. I can do that. I can do that. I have to say who is it? Who was it? Who was it? Tommy. Let me say something. We do have a problem with seats drinking. We do have a problem with seats drinking. They are not. I stopped. Yeah, yeah, we're not pacifists, <laughs> man. We've a cookie. Oh, I used to say. work in a Sikh restaurant. All they used to do was drink, fam. They used to come in with their wives in the afternoon oh, and come shit. back at night with the dancers and that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, big up to the Sikhs. We know how to live, though. We know how to live. And see what else? We're fun people, man. Let me just say something. Let me just say something. Let me just say something. Every community has their problem, yeah? And the one thing I have to say about my community that I condemn is that we have a big problem with alcoholism where people are dying. Like literally, I nearly died once and I will, I've gone over that before, but I haven't drank for six years. So to my seat, uh, no, I, I fell asleep in the car and have a hypothermia. So basically, when it comes to alcohol, this is something I agree with you in terms of Islam and Sikhs have forbids it as well. But for some reason, the Sikhs, you need to get your act together. Because whenever I, I meet, when it, it, no, whenever I meet people at the park, it's embarrassing and I say, I don't drink. They say, oh, I thought Sikhs don't drink. That is the bad reputation that we've got from our particular community and everyone has their own kind of nuance in terms of problems. So when it comes to that, you know, I can condemn my community for that as well. But like I said, the, 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 the drinking culture, I totally disagree with when it comes to the Britain as well. I think it's a negative part of British culture that I don't personally like, but it's there. And so, you know, we can't... In moderation, anything in moderation. Oh. Anything, too, too much of anything is bad, isn't it? Anything, even if you eat freaking bare vegetables, it's going to be bad. I don't have a problem with people yeah. drinking, but when yeah. you start, anything, you know how drinking people... What about baked beans? What about, what about baked beans? What about baked beans? Is oh, it too much of that? You, you, you can tell us that in about 20 years time after your experiment. I'd like to say one thing that's right. I don't know if you've had a baked beans, but the Islamic community, through your life, right? The time when I was in the army, the only one family that supported my family in an entire borough full of yeah. very racist yeah. people living in that area. The only yeah. one family, do you know where they were from? Punjab, yeah. They were your the thing is, yeah, this is the this is the way. I think, I think, I think I might, I think I might have um, my family. What it, what it is, yeah, I think my experience. Yeah, go, go, go. Besides, besides the besides the disagreements of the war and the the colonization of the country and you know the separation and the you know this of the whole war against Pakistan and India, it was actually Raj's people. But, well, not Raj's family, uh, was, India is a third world country. Was, you need to sort yourself out. I'm not Indian, man. I'm not Indian. I'm Punjabi. Oh, India is a third world. Is Punjab not India, though? Yeah, but I don't. I want a separate state. And I was in the army at the time. So basically, one thing is quite interesting that I, I I don't think I've experienced that much here is that you've experienced a lot of racism from white people, and because I was in a very multicultural area where we had a lot of Pakistanis, I was one of the very only only, only Sikhs in the area, so all my mates were Pakistani or uh, Bengali or Indian Muslim. So I didn't really experience that much racism. The most I had was like I used to wear, you know, you get your bandha, your bobble head, or you put your packing stuff like here and there. But I have I've realised that in certain other areas, you know what it is? Yeah, when, when you're the, when you're the minority like yourself, hmm. you've experienced real racism. I haven't experienced. Maybe that's why I have a little you bit of disassociation. You experienced Asian people, right? Yeah, I have more like from them because they. You would have experienced the same if you was in my place. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that in my with me, the people that have called me raghead are not white people. It was Pakistani Muslim people. Well, listen, if, if you was living people, in, if you I'm was saying somebody that not my turban of once, he wasn't a white person. He was a, a Pakistani guy. Somebody, the guy that grew my uh, one of my uh, cousins, uh, wasn't a white guy. Was, you so do you understand that what happens over? Arab, I get called the P word. But what I'm saying is that what I'm saying is that he's been called the P word as well. Yeah, yeah. By by white people, and we're you not even. You look Punjabi. <laughs> So well, listen, Raj, I'll tell you something. Like, yeah. Back then, right, when you yeah. was getting harassed by Asian people, in that time, even if you was living in, let's say, the birthplace of the British National yeah, Park, yeah. Bexley Heath and Eltham, yeah. where Stephen yeah. Lawrence was killed, yeah. Yeah. you would experience that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. So like I said, when I went to the white area, when I was 16, I felt like really out of place and like everyone was looking at me. I could see? And I didn't go back up, I went Romford once. Romford. When I was 16 in the oh, 80s, yeah. And when it was he all white. And so when I went, I actually down. felt fearful and I decided I don't want to go back there. I went back there maybe 15 years, 20 years later and I didn't feel like at that time because I was older. Mm. So yeah, I do agree. There, there is this kind of like, I do, I, maybe myself, when I'm talking to people, I do have a disconnect with racism, I think, because I haven't really experienced racism like some other people have. I think I've had quite an okay uh, 
let's just say kind of a, a much more softer kind of uh, life when it comes to racism because you the way you talk about it it's like it was really horrific like, i got chased by them down the road and stuff and I mean, yeah. when I was in the army, then they were sticking like, you know, the drawing pins in the soap. Yeah, yeah, that's wow. disgusting. Yeah, and then I've come to my bed and there's a, there's a, someone took a shit on my bed. Oh wow. my God, and man. And then, they, then I, um, but listen, and this guy is serving your country, yeah. that's how you yeah. treat yeah. it, yeah. 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 Listen, Shame on you, bloke. What did the Kandashi, what did the British Army do, though? Did they try and tackle yeah. that or did they ignore they, it? They, I mean, OC Operation Echo, my sergeants in general, or whatever, they were, they were very, very good. Yeah. They were good. I mean, they actually, you know, even one of the people, one of the boys, I don't want to mention his name, he's on my Facebook, yeah? Yeah. He, uh, he was a very, 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 very racist person. He had like 100% British beef tattooed on his chest. Yeah, yeah. F you, yeah? whoever you yeah. are. But now he's a Muslim. You saw that, you saw that. Lies! No, you're actually not bad. You don't want to say you there. F you, in the sense where you're flourished. Flourished. At least that's a good time. Why'd you have to wait for that? That's how you put a punchline to end up with that person, yeah? See, so can you not see that? Or that's quite a good example of somebody that is not racist, but can you not see that? Or that's quite a good example of somebody that was might have been somebody that might have disliked uh, Islam or people, but, and, then, and, and so so if somebody like that can then change and then become Muslim, which is the ultimate transformation, going from one extreme to the next, there is there is hope. Oh, come on, we don't want everyone to become Muslim for God's sake. But basically, yeah, basically that you do have yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are not necessarily bad people. Now the person that done the attack in New Zealand is an evil piece of shit. No matter what you said to him, he would have cured those people. Doesn't matter what you showed him, he didn't care if they were children, women, or whatever, because he's evil. But there are other people, the masses of people, that genuinely, if you were to talk to them, I think they would start adjusting their views. But you can't start calling people racist at the first uh, sign of kind of like what you might consider to be offensive. You understand? I mean, as Muslims, let me just say one thing, yeah? As Muslims, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was attacked a lot. Actually, more worse than the way we think we were being attacked, in the sense where he had thrones. Stone thrown at him, he was spat out, he was cursed, everything. And he never acted with aggression the way that we act today. So as Muslims, any time you are being attacked for your faith, just refer back to the way that the Prophet wasallam dealt with it. I know it's hard sometimes because you want to react, anger takes over, but we have to be following the Sunnah, the ways of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So this is a message to the Muslim community because a lot of us need to kind of get in tune with our Islam. A lot of us have started to stray on the wrong path. Even me, myself, I'm one of the worst. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes my Iman is high, sometimes my Iman is low. That's how it is as a Muslim. None of us are perfect. But moving forward, you know, as Islamophobia rises, we need to learn how to be prepared, you know? Before the, before the storm happens, we need to know how to react, you know what I'm saying to you? And to that mass to shooter, I don't know if you're going to see can, this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. To that brother, not even a brother, to that animal, to that devil mm. that killed the innocent Muslims, you might have killed them in flesh and bone, but they are still alive in spirit. And they are with our Creator, alhamdulillah. You have given them a one way ticket to Jannah. Islam will never die. You can never put fear in our hearts. You can kill as many of us as you want, but Islam will never ever die. You can kill Muslims, but Islam will never die. Allah Akbar la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ahli Muhammad Islam will continue to grow inshallah by the by the will of Allah Islam doesn't want to take over Islam is there to stay we're not going anywhere this is our faith we have the right to be muslim and what about the guy that uh, the soldier that uh, changed <coughs> do you want to say something to and mashallah to that muslim uh, to that brother that was racist in the beginning but alhamdulillah he became muslim may Allah <laughs> Bless you. F him. No, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Uh, uh, do, do you want to come into the conversation? Because we've got a white person here. He's not white, though. Stop saying that, Rush. He, he's, he's not white. He's not white. He's some new race of uh, leprechaun white, or something. Man. I don't know what he is. He's better. He's better. I'm joking. See that there, though, Rog? Yeah. I don't care you say that, but... Take that way. If I say something about your culture, you'd be Say it! Call me Bud Bud Ding Ding. I don't give a shit. That's right, though. Be honest, though, bro. No, I don't care. If you said F6 and that, you were like, I don't care. You do care. I don't care. Say it. If someone says something, you go crazy. I don't go crazy. That's just my normal self. Surfers is a prick. That's why. I just don't like that man. 
<laughs> Sir Fazier is a total turd of a human being. So do you want to come into the conversation as our honorary white man? Do you want to take my place because I'm going to go? No, no, we need you here, man. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We need the kind of like ferocity, like this kind of bun, 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 the British Empire and all that it's kind of stuff. Here. Yeah, do you want to come into the conversation? Right, or do you want to stay off camera? Yeah, just stay on the side if you don't want to be recorded. If you want to just your voice, it's okay. You can't get in there. You can't get in there. No, no, if you don't want to be You can forever conflate in race with ideology, you keep saying racism towards Muslims. I think Islam is a threat. I don't like Islam. I never have and I never will. Okay. But it has nothing to do with individual Muslims because they are people. Right. I try and see